growing up, you know, uh, Hershey's has been this very fantasized chocolate brand. And especially when anyone went abroad or when we were coming back, I, I you know, on a personal level, I, I remember when I went to uh, Dubai, my uh, wife family had a lot of requests. But one of the key things that were there in the request was Hershey's ka chocolate leke aana bhai. Kuch nahi lao to at least Hershey's ke chocolate to le aana. So, you know, Hershey's uh, chocolates have, have, have been on every traveler's list or every uh, everyone's list whose friends are traveling abroad. But thanks to Mr. Harjit Bhalla, the game has changed since 2018 with their aggressive marketing strategies and the brand has made its presence felt in India. The man behind it for Hershey's to be available in India. You know, I was talking to Simran from BW Brazil World. She says that unke dood wale ke paas bhi Hershey's ke kisses are available. So I think kudos to you and kudos to your team, uh, Mr. Bhalla. Uh, he was the then uh, MD for India and now has been elevated to a global leadership position. Let's welcome Harijit Bhalla, the Vice President of India and Asia Pacific, Europe, Middle East and Africa, the Hershey's company. Today, he will be telling us about future proofing your brand post the pandemic. Bala sir, welcome. Thank you uh, so much, Vaibhav. And that was indeed a very warm welcome. I just want to say that uh, where we are today is, is the result of a fantastic team that uh, I have at Hershey. So all kudos and all hats off to each one of them. But first thing, thanks to you that, uh, you know, you have made it uh, so comfortable to all of us. You know, ki now we don't now Hershey's is not on the list. Hershey's like it is available in India every new can corner. So thank you for it. Thank you, Webov. And uh, in the next break, just ensure you run to the nearest shop and buy yourself some Hershey's kisses. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Super. See, this is called brand plugin. Kahin bhi ho, brand plugin is extremely important. And remember, everyone watching us. That you're learning from the pros, right? So pay attention to that. Smooth plug-in, Hamish important. Uh, Mr. Bhala, over to you now. Thank you, Webov. I'm just going to try and uh, share my screen. Just let me know when it comes up. It's there. Okay. So a very, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited to be part of the PIT CMO Summit and amongst all of you brilliant minds from the industry. I'm sure all of you are going to agree with me when I say that the ongoing pandemic has taught us so much more than what we bargained for in life. For me, the last two years have been enriching, both in terms of my personal and my professional development. When we look at the topic today, it is a conundrum that is faced by many industry leaders, especially during the pandemic. How do we future-proof our business? Now, as I start, I'm going to start with a quote that I came across by Walt Disney, which made a lot of sense to me. You may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. And isn't that exactly what happened to us. There were so many challenging situations, especially in the case of running an organization, our usual ways of working and doing business had to be changed. In some cases, they had to be replaced by alternate processes. It provided us with a golden opportunity to adapt and reinvent our ways of building an organization. Now, this is something that all of you know. So when we look at the FMCG industry, there were lots of trends and a lot of things that uh, really impacted us. How we dealt with them is what's important. Initially, we struggled and then we learned to cope. And there were some seismic shifts that we've been seeing in how we do business going forward. And as they say, out of adversity comes opportunity. Firstly, the pandemic resulted in a complete disruption of our supply chains. We were struggling to get trucks. 
The whole conversation was about having a pass to be able to go out on the street. And then we started laying the foundation for a high degree of automation, high degree of digitization across our supply chain. And our lead times started going down, resulting in fresher stock for our consumers. So big benefit. Secondly, they were this whole change in consumer behavior. Consumers were staying indoors a lot more. The kitchen became the happy connecting place for families. Now, this presented a significant opportunity for us as uh, Hershey, uh, with a lot of our consumers taking to baking in a big way. And we'll talk a little more about it as we go along. The third big thing, BFY became the new buzzword. From people who never read a label to understanding what all is coming inside the pack and what they can have, which is filled with fortification that's going to make them healthier, is something that started to go about. Again, a huge opportunity for our plant-based protein brand, Sofit, uh, uh, that, that was very relevant at this time. And finally, of course, uh, e-commerce. And I, I, be, uh, I, I would even say that in the last two years, we've seen e-commerce shift by almost 10 years. That is how significant the impact of uh, the pandemic has been on, on our retail landscape. Now, we've seen a lot of wonderful learnings during this challenging time. But I personally also realized that a significant changes were taking place at a more humane level. While we have been brainstorming regarding how else we can future-proof our business strategies, an extremely integral part of building anything, irrespective of which field of expertise you belong to, is going to be people. The people who make it all possible and how well we connect with them. So for me, my mantra to future-proof business going forward is all about building deeper connections, deeper connections in everything that we do, whether it's with our consumers, with our customers, with our fellow employees, and yes, even with our own family members. This is really about securing the future of our business and our organizations, especially in these trying times. So truly connecting with the right set of audience is going to be important for you to lay the foundation for all upcoming and existing business models. And these, I'm just going to bring alive for you guys over three focus areas, building deeper connections through marketing, building deeper connections with our people, and building deeper connections as leaders. Now, when we move on to marketing, two key points is what I'm going to share with you. It's all going to be about shifting from products to experiences and building brands with purpose. I'm going to start, a quote, uh, start with a quote from our founder who said, give them quality. That's the best kind of advertising in the world. And this is even more true today than it has ever been. It is all going to be about delivering quality at every step of the way. It is not going to be anymore about convincing people to buy your brand. Instead, the priority has moved towards providing fantastic consumer and customer experiences that's going to get people to keep coming back for more. Now, I'm going to share with you an example from within. As you realize, during the pandemic, people were home. Uh, we launched an initiative called Happy at Home with Hershey's, the key focus being how do you make it easy? How do you make things accessible? And how do you make it convenient? So there was this huge program that had celebrity chef curating, uh, uh, Ranveer, curating over 100 recipes. To make it convenient, we had QR codes on our syrup bottles. So all the consumer had to do was scan it, have access to these recipes, and there were a lot of enjoyable family moments that were created 
inside the home. Now, we even realized that there were different kinds of cooks, starter cooks and more uh, advanced level chefs. And of course, we curated uh, our recipes to cater to all their needs. So just one example, and there are many more out there of how we can prioritize from product to better experiences. The next thing is really about building brands with purpose. And again, this is not something that you haven't heard, but this is something that's becoming even more relevant today as we speak. I'm gonna share with you an example from my erstwhile organization. And one of uh, probably according to me, the best brands that bring alive the purpose within, and that's Lifebuoy. You know, this was probably the first brand that issued a public service message uh, during the pandemic, urging consumers to wash hands with soaps or use sanitizers very, very clearly. It is so well linked to what the brand stands for and what they bring to the table. A brilliant example of how during these challenging times, a brand created reliability like no other. So those were certain areas in the space of marketing that I wanted to highlight. The next key area is all about your people. And trust me, if your people are happy, your business is going to fire. And that happiness creates that infectious spirit that's going to bring alive and highly engage your entire organization. It's going to be important, and I know everyone's talking about this now, but it's going to be extremely important on how you work about creating a hybrid work model where people, your employees are going to feel safe, they're going to feel secure, and they're going to feel well looked after. Another example from within Hershey is the best of both, where we are highlighting the fact that we know it's important for you to have personal flex time. We know it's important for you at work to have moments where you can collaborate and moments where you can focus. So the best of both is really, really aimed at ensuring specific days of the week are blocked for collaborative meetings at work and other days where you can focus in peace from the confines or comfort of your home. Extremely important. And I'm saying this because as things are improving, a lot of people are wanting to come back. But the reality is life has changed. What has gone by is never going to be the same again. So it's important that we are sensitive to this as we go along. The other thing that we really became important during the pandemic was how we upskill and repurpose our talent. Something that's going to be important and in ensuring that this talent is all set to embrace the future. Again, something that we've always heard, your business is only as good as the quality of employees that you have within. A lot of organizations are doing lots of great things in this space. We at Hershey have started something called Stronger and Growing Together. It's a three-year program. You know, it's all about helping employees with feedback, coaching, career panels, development tips, e-learning modules, and whatnot. The whole purpose being, and as I summarize this, the whole purpose being look after your employees and they will look after your business. With that, I move to the third and my last pillar that I want to bring alive, which is how do we evolve as leaders? And if there is something that has had to exponentially change over the past two years, it is the quality and the kind of leadership. Agile leaders, resilient leaders who are in touch with their surroundings, and have the ability and the willingness to adapt are the ones who will grow and are the ones who will survive. For me, this starts with on-the-go leadership. You know, resilient leadership or on-the-go leadership 
is like free flowing water. It teaches us to move with the tide, to find pathways, to move despite odds, and to create ways where there are none. Now, let me tell you, this is easier said than done, huh? because this is a very uncomfortable space of leadership. This is a space where you need to be willing to make changes to your plans. In fact, uh, at least the theory that I had followed during this time was, don't take any strong, sharp, or long-term impact calls during this time. Because, you know, it's, it's the same way when we go to a restaurant, we are very hungry, we tend to overorder. Similarly, during the case of the pandemic, where there was a lot of fear and there was a lot of concern, we tend to take certain calls that may not be beneficial for the long run. So it's about being comfortable with chaos, comfortable with instability, and comfortable with confusion. That's on-the-go leadership that's going to be extremely relevant in how we future-proof our businesses going forward. I'm going to talk to you about an example of ownership, of leadership that really will pull at your heartstrings. During the first pandemic, uh, and we spoke about the fact that consumption was really going up in home. Uh, our entire range of Hershey spreads, syrups, cocoa powder was flying through the roof. At this time, there was a lockdown that got imposed in Bhopal and our factories in Mandidi, which is in another uh, district next door. Everyone, our employees live in Bhopal. And suddenly no one could go to the factory. And at a time where you're probably having the highest demand uh, in history ever. Now, this is when 20 employees volunteered to shift into the factory for two weeks. Trust me, that is probably the most humbling thing for us. These employees put their lives and their families uh, at risk, they put the company first. And when I had asked them, why do you want to do it? They said, we are if the company is. And that for me is, is the most classic example of leadership. These 20 leaders stayed two weeks and they're not a factory that's equipped for uh, accommodation. Everything was makeshift. And they ensured that we got stock as much as was as our consumers needed during this extremely difficult time. Now, isn't this a testament of ownership, uh, resilience, and absolutely brilliant leadership at an individual level? So hats off uh, to these guys. Moving on to my last point, which is really about leadership beyond business. And this is again something that's becoming extremely important. You know, we need, we're reaching a stage where consumers are getting concerned about this. We need to inculcate an approach where businesses place equal emphasis on social and environmental implications as it does on financial ones. Businesses need to take a more empathetic and societal and sustainable approach towards their operations. You know, we need to start to believe that we can do well by doing good. So this is clearly something that's going to be extremely important. For us at Hershey, I think we take pride in, in, in the fact that our entire SCOCO is, is completely certified sustainable. So globally, there's been a lot of focus on cocoa sustainability, and we're working really hard to be in this space and we are happy and proud. This was a big milestone where 100% of our cocoa is certified sustainable. So I'm going to end with a quote from our founder, again, Milton Hershey, where he said that our value of our good is not measured by what it does, 
but by the amount of good it does to the one concerned. So bear that in mind. With that, I'm coming to an end of my keynote and I'm wishing all of you all the very best as you go about future-proofing your businesses and future-proofing your brands. It was an absolute pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, what a fabulous uh, stories uh, you shared. I think, uh, I think something that really inspired me was your team working out uh, from the Bhopal factory for two plus weeks. I think that was fabulous. How I, I think that would have really stood as a, as a testament to even your leadership, right? And and to the entire leadership of the factory that they're choosing to stay out. When you first heard that, what really went into your mind? I'm, I'm really eager to know that. Uh, I'd say shock and disbelief. And gratitude and humility. You know, it is humbling that people are going out and doing that. And I think that's been the story for us at Hershey during the last one and a half years, the way the people have come together. And that's why, you know, you, you heard me, the core of businesses is going to be people. And it is these deeper connects. And I can tell you that's that the kind of connections that have been made uh, during this time are have been really, really deep. Absolutely. You know, we, we have come to see uh, so many sides of different indiv individuals during this time. And uh, it is absolutely humbling. And, uh, you know, I can just be grateful. Um, you know, uh, I, another very interesting thing that you uh, mentioned of, of, of the Walt Disney's uh, quote, because not a lot of people uh, can, can really digest that. And, and it is so true that we have learned how to evolve. And, and even you very rightly mentioned uh, in uh, terms of not having a very long-term plan, not making any anything that can uh, be a part of the long-term vision. But right now is the time when you are trying to do makeshift arrangements to make sure uh, that... So can you can you tell us any decision that you have kind of taken where um, that can also be applied in the long-term plus if extremely if effective during uh, uh, the lockdown time that we've, we've been going through? Hey, uh you know, there are lots of examples, but uh, in terms of being agile and being nimble, uh, since we have a lot of marketeers uh, today and this is the CMO Summit, uh, the one thing I can tell you is in the area of media planning, right? Uh, most of us uh, in traditional ways of operating will have media plans that are taped up for the year. Now, we had to live with the idea of, you know, really discussing media planning almost on a weekly basis. Because you need to be, in terms of ensuring that you get the right bang for buck, your media has to correlate or uh, be linked to your availability. Now, if people are not being able to go outside and people are not being able to even access uh, a new launch that you've probably put in the marketplace, then uh, you're, you're going to be burning up cash if you're on air and uh, there's no product. So, you know, I'm just saying it's just about re-looking at a lot of this. And actually there's, an, there's another example. We, in the midst of the pandemic, realized that innovations usually take a long time. I come from uh, an organization both at Unilever and at Hershey, where we spend a lot of time doing a lot of research and getting the product right. And now there was the need of coming up with innovations that are quick. And in fact, for the first time ever, I think we'd be happy to say that we launched a uh, hot chocolate last year in under three months. That, that's uh, from an inception of an idea to be in the marketplace. That uh, was what you would call a swift uh, innovation. So yeah, clearly lots of such examples. Absolutely. Now from, you know, because you mentioned media, let's uh, get in uh, a very dear friend of mine who uh, actually is so busy that at times he doesn't even pick my call. <laughs> but we have um, Suhail Ramin. Buddy, hi, how uh, how are you doing? Ruhail, are you there? Hi, hi, hi Thanks. I was very absorbed in the question that you asked. Sorry, I was just checking my audio. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you so much. Uh, you did uh, uh, quite some pointed questions out there. And uh, thank you, Mr. Bala. I was listening to the presentation uh, 
And quickly, since we have uh, five to seven minutes, I just want to have one question that you spoke about uh, placing people in the center of uh, the learning has put, you know, the leadership back into thinking about how people are important and uh, how marketing can uh, ensure a deeper connect uh, henceforth. At a personal level as well, uh, if you could tell me, you know, what all changes have happened, you know, uh, from a personal standpoint. Uh, Royal, uh, are you talking about uh, personally? What are the personal and changes that have happened? Also, since it was a stressful time to cope up with it and to, it's not resilience only from the brand side, from the leadership side, just a little bit about it. I think a uh, couple of things, uh, like I said, deeper connections. Uh, I'll give you an example. My leadership team and uh, I used to connect for an hour every day, five days a week which was never the case when uh, in, in normal times. Of course, we would connect, but maybe once or twice a week. So we, we had five huddles a week where we would connect. Uh, and there was enough importance given to understanding how we get the business up and running and equally enough importance to see how, we, uh, how the people are doing. We did dipsticks with people to understand how they're doing. We were extremely conscious in our ways of working. So I'll just give you certain examples. And this was important you know, for me as well. Uh, one to two was lunch break. You couldn't reach out to people between one to two. You could lock out your time. There were no meetings to be officially fixed beyond 6.30. Fridays became flex Fridays where after 1 p.m., uh, no official meeting so that people could do their own thing. Uh, there was flex during the whole week where you could talk to your line manager and say, listen, I need to uh, focus on my child's uh, class for two hours, but I'll put in these two hours elsewhere or I'll put in the work that happens. So I'm just telling you, whatever I'm talking about for people is actually applicable uh, to me as well. And uh, it was extremely important because when you're working from home, the lines get blurred between when is family time and when is uh, work time. And that's something that we as leaders need to drive. So at least at Hershey, I can tell you, no, no weekends are yours, no communication. Saturdays, uh, Friday, second half, you take out time to do your own thing. Lunches are yours, after 6.30 is yours. Uh, and yes, there were a lot of these initiatives that the HR team ran under a Hershey Cares program, which was talking about physical and men mental well-being. So personally for me, I started a, a, a lot more focus on uh, physical well-being than I probably did in the past. Uh, we did a lot of seminars on emotional and men mental well-being because we realized that it does tend to get frustrating where you're looking at a screen the whole day. So lots of these examples, uh, <clears throat> and of course, uh, I think something that every organization did helped with vaccination for people, medical insurances for people, uh, supplies of oxygen concentrators, that whatever we could do uh, during this time. I mean, it was truly a pandemic, right? And uh, the first, uh, and I, I, I'll just tell you, the first lockdown, it was all about ensuring how we can get business up and running. The second lockdown was all about ensuring hospital beds and uh, ensuring how people have access to Medicaid. So there's been an evolution. Hopefully, we are now a lot better prepared uh, right. to meet if something else comes up. Perfect. My final question, uh, you spoke about building the connect with marketing. And uh, the attempt has always been, of course, the same. But uh, the way we approach it, I think, has changed. The sentiment has changed. Or from a leadership perspective, from a brand leader's perspective, uh, has uh, overall marketing landscape become more people-centric than ever? Will it stay, stand that way as we move on? Oh, absolutely. I think marketing has become more consumer-centric than it has ever been. And this is coming more from the demands of the consumer as well and how the marketeers are also evolving. <laughs> Let's see, digitization has played a huge, huge role. Uh, we're moving into an environment where the future of retail is largely omni-channel. Now, if you look at how this is all evolving, there is a need for a lot more personalization of the connection with 
uh, the consumer. You know, in the earlier days, we, there used to be a saying, get the product on shelf, the consumer will buy it. It's not going to happen anymore. The product needs to talk to the consumer. It needs to mean something for the consumer. And it needs to be able to make that consumer's life a lot more meaningful and a lot more con convenient for the consumer to reach out. So I clearly see an evolution. And we're seeing a retail landscape also evolving in line. I mean, e-commerce has suddenly become the center of it all. You know, the, in the last few years, I can speak about uh, us at Hershey. Ecom now for the average uh, contribution to businesses is roughly about 2%. For us at Hershey, it contributes to over 10%. Now that is also allowing us to digitally connect, geo-target our consumers and engage and also work, collaborate together to even create a lot of user-generated content. So it's the connection. Now they're talking as people. All right. I just got a cue that we are out of time, but wonderful listening to you and thanks for joining us today, uh, Mr. Bala. It was a great conversation and a great, great learning. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, Rohel, and a pleasure being there. Wish you all the very best for the rest of the summit. Thank you. Thank you.